Ha, still going. I'm not sure what's going on here in the off grid garage, in the SPAT calibration center actually, but something weird. So this morning when I woke up at about 7.30 or so, um, I had a look on the VRM to see what the SPAT calibration center is doing. You know, you need to check. And I could see this. And I thought, why is it doing this? There's nothing connected to it apart from the charger. So it should only charge, but not discharge. And well, now, look at this, it is still doing it. Charging, discharging, charging, discharging. But the incoming, the incoming solar is still there, it's still constant. So what is going on here? Top battery, one amp. Then it goes down to 0.3 amps. What? Uh, bottom battery. Look at this, negative two. It goes positive, negative. Five amps, in and out. What the heck is going on? Okay, let's turn off the charger. Disconnect our solar, so our charger is off. It is still doing it. What the heck is going on? Let us disconnect the two batteries. So they are not linked anymore. This one should go to zero, thankfully. And this one is zero too. Okay, let's turn on the solar charger again. So this one should only charge the top battery now because this is where our cables are connected to. What the heck? Here it comes. One amp. Yeah, and now it is nicely charging, see? It is not swinging around all the time between charging and discharging anymore. 1.4 amps. Okay, let me reintroduce the other battery again. And immediately, it starts uh, swinging again. What? Okay, let's turn off the solar charger again. So this is basically just these two batteries in parallel, the 280 ampere hour Mason and the uh, 135 ampere hour Mason in parallel. And it looks like it's going back and forward, at least with this BMS here. Okay, let's disconnect the communication between the two. It still does it. So obviously there's an equalization current going back and forward between these two batteries for some reason. What is the voltage saying? 52.5, but look how it is swinging. And this one, 52.35, pretty constant. Let's disconnect this one as well. This is the um, positive connection to our bus bar system, to the Lynx bus bar system. So basically we only have the two batteries in parallel now connected with these two links. Positive, positive, negative, negative, nothing else is connected. You can also disconnect the CAN communication to the Victron system. Still going back and forward. Yeah, we can see it here as well. Negative, then positive, negative, positive. So obviously there's power going back and forward between these two batteries. What is, what is going on? Why is this happening? Like just by themselves. Oh boy. So, and I just logged into the Seplos BMS via the Victron remote console and we can also see the current here going positive, negative. Yeah, there again. 
So a positive 5, negative 1.5, going back and forward. Even we are charging. Jeez, what is going on? Why is there? I just logged in with the battery monitor to the Zeploss battery. Uh, pack number one is the big one, 280 ampere hour. And here the current shows positive two, negative two. See how it swings back and forward. And then it says current limit switch. The current limit switch. Charging switch. It turns off charging. Why is it turning off charging? So there's definitely something wrong. Okay, let me do a test here. So I have now taken off the cable coming from our Lynx bus bar system. This is where the solar power comes in. And I've taken this cable off the battery number two here on top and put it just on the battery number one. And now we will disconnect the two batteries. So we are only charging the bottom battery. And now I have disconnected the positive link between the two batteries. And there's nothing going into the top battery anymore, of course, because the link is not there. Here I can see 3.17 amps going into the battery. Just fine. So what happens if I reintroduce this battery at the top here? Again. One amp. Again, it starts swinging again. Positive four, negative one. What the heck is going on? Why is it freaking doing that? So what I can see with the big battery is here, the current limit switch is coming up sometimes. There it is. See, this green is activated. So it's limiting the current going into the battery. And this is exactly when we see the negative numbers there. See that? Current limit switch. Why is it limiting the current already? And then it turns negative because it only allows discharging at this point of time. The charging switch is turned off there. It's turned off, no charging. And then the big battery delivers power to the smaller battery. Current limit switch. So locked back into the big battery. And here is a current limit switch invalidation. It is turned on. If I turn this one off. Okay, so this has it. No, it's still doing it. Still going back and forward. It has definitely something to do with battery number one, the big one. Okay, let's turn this back on. And these few parameters here on the left are the only ones which have something to do with amps. But this is all overcurrent protection. There's nothing where I can set a limit. Is this maybe why Zeplos is not recommending putting these two batteries together in parallel? Because it just doesn't work. But why is it not working? We had this installed for weeks and it was working fine. I couldn't see any of these behavior at all, nothing. But now it does this, I don't know. Okay, uh, let me do some more testing here and see what I can find out. Insane. Ha, found it. In the parameters or better in the function switch area, go all the way down. And I have turned off take the initiative current limit charging. I turned this one off and the behavior stopped. It is charging now fine. Okay, let me turn this one back on. It was on before. Save. Okay, let me have a look at the manual and see what these settings actually are for. Uh, maybe we can make sense out of all that. I'll be right back. Okay guys, welcome back. It is now the next day. Uh, I had actually to contact Zeplos because I had a look in this list they provided us with um, a couple of weeks ago with all where all the function switches of the BMS are explained. And I could not find the take the initiative limiting charging function situation switch. So I got back to them and they replied this morning and said, well, depending on the BMS and the software version, it may have a different name and in the list, it is called 
active charging current limiting. This is the one on the last page. And it says here, when this charging switch is activated, the charging current will be limited to 10 amps only. And I asked back and said, why? What is this switch for? What, what is it actually doing? Why, is, why would you limit your charging current to 10 amps? And he said, well, it is more like for testing purposes. If you have a big solar array and you want to limit your, and you want to test something and you want to limit your incoming current from 150 amps to only 10 amps, this is what the switch is for. And I said, okay. Unfortunately, we have just a shower coming in now and there's no, there's no power coming from the solar anymore. So we cannot see the current going back and forth, but you have seen it just from the yesterday videos when it goes negative and positive, negative, positive. Take the initiative current limiting charging. As soon as we turn this one off and save it, the battery will then start charging normally as you would expect it. Okay, so apparently this is just a test button, a test switch, which we don't use. And I think it is turned off by default actually, but I may have turned this on for testing purposes and have forgotten about it. So I need to check the other BMS as well if it is turned on. And maybe the combination of these two BMSs in parallel with this switch turned on in both BMSs makes this weird behavior here. So it should be fine now. Okay guys, so far this video from today, a bit of a, a, bit of a weird one, I guess. And Honestly, I'm not 100% sure if this is the real function of this switch because yesterday morning when I woke up at 7.30, there was no 10 amps charging from the solar charge controller into the batteries. So there was no reason for the software to kick in and limit our charging to 10 amps because we were charging only with 3 or 4 amps at this point of time. So I guess we will see in the future how this all works out. But for now, it seems to have solved the problem. I have seen both batteries charging normally during the day. And I guess we have to keep learning about this BMS and all the settings and how this all works together when you have more than one battery um, in parallel with different BMSs. I tell you, the Zeplos BMSs are not that straightforward. I'm, I'm sure they're working fine once everything is set up, configured correctly, and we have an understanding what is actually going on. I guess until then, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then, bye bye. See you in the next video tomorrow or the day after tomorrow when we do more testing with this battery here. I've got the suspicion this is not the last time we find something in these BMSs, which is not so straightforward. So stay tuned. Yeah, the sun came just out a bit. So you can see here now it's charging just fine. There, yeah, 0.7 amps but there's no negative and positive anymore. No back and forward. And the other battery is zero and it's still not, it's still not, um, I don't know what's going on here. Well, as I just said, I think there are more settings we need to check.